So I'll make this very quick. So I was minding my own business about five years ago, and some reporter called me up and said, what would happen if India and Pakistan got into a nuclear war? And I spent a lot of time on this in the 1980s, and my gut reaction was, well, they'd kill a bunch of Indians and Pakistanis. The rest of us wouldn't notice anything. And I felt very guilty about this because I hadn't really assessed it. So then after I found a little time, I went out and started thinking about it. And my first question was, well, they couldn't possibly have very many nuclear weapons. But well, then I discovered that between them, they probably have 110 to 200 nuclear weapons. So they actually do have large arsenals there. And um, so then I said, OK, well, what happens if they start shooting them at each other? And um, there were two interesting things there. One is that. India and Pakistan's previous wars have killed a few thousand Indians and Pakistani military people. Just one nuclear weapon dropped in a city in either one of those countries would kill a hundred times as many people. So by building these weapons, ostensibly to protect themselves from each other, they've put themselves at a risk that's a hundred or more times greater than if they'd never built the weapons in the first place. So then I started trying to figure out, well, if they had a full-scale war and used their arsenals, it turns out that between them they could kill as many people as died in the Second World War just in their countries. You know, so 50 million people, or tens of millions of people. You know, then I looked at the amount of smoke that could be produced there. It turned out to be very large. So if India and Pakistan got into a nuclear war and used about 100 weapons, it appears to us that the uh, effect would be 40% uh, ozone loss at our latitude, 70% ozone loss in the polar regions, you know, which are orders of magnitude more than the losses we've been worried about from chlorofluorocarbons. And the climate change would drop the surface temperature to the temperatures lower than any that have occurred in the last thousand years and probably destroy a lot of agriculture at mid-latitudes, uh, threatening a large fraction of the human population by starvation. Um, so uh, Half or? Well, it, it's hard to tell without. So the Department of Homeland Security, for example, we've approached about this issue, and their response was, shh, don't talk about it. DOD knows all about it. You don't have to worry. So there are no <laughs> governmental analyses of what would happen to us if there were a regional nuclear war, no funding, no studies, no group except me and a couple of friends who've ever looked at this. So uh, it's very difficult to tell, you know, really how many people would die. The best estimate we have now is from a, a medical doctor whose argument is that there are about a billion people on the planet who are barely subsisting. And in fact, they're greatly threatened at the moment because of the tightening food supplies, you know, there are riots going on in Haiti, there are riots going on in Africa, there are rice restrictions, export restrictions going on from Asia, which are threatening these pe marginal people already. And so that's a scenario. There's a billion people who have poor access to food now, and if the mid-latitude populations lose access to food, they will buy whatever is left, and those billion people will starve to death. So that's the best estimate we have. Well, uh, if you're talking about a full-scale war between the United States and Russia, you know, then uh, the climate modeling we've done recently suggests, for example, that in a We've looked, for, for example, at Iowa and uh, the Ukraine. In Iowa and Ukraine, following a full-scale nuclear war, it would not get above freezing for a couple years. That means there would be no agricultural productivity in the heartlands of Europe or in the heartlands of the United States. Plus, global precipitation falls by about 90 percent. So not only is it freezing, there's no precipitation either. Right. I mean, this is this. A full-scale nuclear war just from the climate effects. So this, in the 1980s, we thought the biggest problem was you destroyed transportation systems and fuel and things like that, and that would just cripple the world agricultural. But in, in this case, you know, the new models, which are based on NCAR, they're NCAR models, um, just basically show you that agriculture in middle latitudes wouldn't survive. And right. you have, there are very, you know, my wife basically has never paid any attention to this. Uh, until last Christmas, or maybe Christmas before, we had a big snowstorm in Boulder, and um, you couldn't buy anything in the stores in Boulder for the next week, and there was no gasoline either. So we were starting to run to gasoline, and you right. couldn't get Christmas dinner together. So right. that's the food storage period that people have in the world is a week in big cities. Well, the total world food storage at the moment is like 60 days. There's enough food harvested for 60 days. After that, it's starvation.